a number of people have a tin ear or they're a bit tone deaf or they have difficulty singing in tune, but they can still enjoy music. Um, but there's something which is very rare where there is a total uh, inability to perceive music as music. Uh, 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 people speak here of amusia, of congenital amusia. Sometimes amusia can occur from a brain injury or a tumour. Sometimes one may be born with it. Um, uh, and uh, people like this really can't tell one tune from another. I first encountered this uh, in a colleague, a French neurologist called L'Hermite. And L'Hermite told me that if music was played, he could either say this was the Marseillaise or it wasn't. You know, more than that, he couldn't say. Now, I, I'm afraid I didn't ask him what the Marseillaise was like and how he knew it was the Marseillaise. Would people sort of salute or stand to attention? Did they have a special look? Or uh, was it the rhythm? Uh, um, or, or how did he know and what did it sound like? But anyhow, some years later, uh, in fact, fairly recently, I've had a chance to talk to a delightful, intelligent woman who has this condition. Um, she describes how, as a child, she came from a rather musical family, she couldn't recognize any tune, she couldn't distinguish tunes, and her, her mother would get furious and say, what have you got against music? You know, and her, her father tried to train her with records, it was useless. Um, uh, and um, as a young woman, you know, her boyfriends would like to take her to concerts, and she would say yes, but she was partly bored and partly excruciated. I said, why excruciated? You know, what did it sound like to you? And she said, you want to know what it sounds like? She says, when you play what you call music, she says, she says, to me it sounds like a rattling of pots and pans. If you went into the kitchen and you threw all the pots and pans on the floor, it's noise. Um, and I was sort of um, really rather appalled by this, and I, I felt very sympathetic to her. Um, she, in fact, then described how uh, in 98, she'd seen an article in a newspaper describing how some researchers in Montreal were working on congenital amusia, and she contacted them and uh, met them, and they investigated her, and they very much reassured her, in a way. They said, first, yes, this was a rec she wasn't the only person in the world, it was a recognizable condition, and there were a few other people whom they'd be happy to introduce her to, who also had congenital amusia. They said it wasn't anything emotional, it wasn't because she hated the music or hated her mother. It was a neurological condition, and there were definite changes in the brain which went with this. And they also told her, which was very important, they said, if your husband asks you to go to a concert, say, you go. You go. I'm a music. And she said, I only wish they had told me this when I was seven and not when I was 70, so I didn't have a lifetime of having to bear music, so-called, which for me, you know, is like pots and pans.